Since it's the holiday season, let's talk about how companies are utilizing your neurology and psychology to sell you stuff. And where those spooky commercials come from, you know the ones. Anyone, including myself, who engages in retail therapy knows that it makes you feel good. You also may be racked with regret once you get the item and look at your bank account. There's a part of your brain that's actually involved in the decision to go shopping. That's the ventral striatum. When you shop, there's a number of things that are happening. You have feelings of dopamine and endorphins. When you look at an item you're familiar with, you'll actually get those happy chemicals. Companies are aware of this. You may have also seen stuff pop up on your phone as an ad for something you were only just talking about. As far as we know, phones are not actually listening in on your conversations, but they are monitoring your whereabouts and the whereabouts of who you're around. Let's say you're walking by a Chick-fil-A. You may have that in your mind and you may mention it to somebody later and boom, you get an ad for Chick-fil-A. Or you have a friend who really likes a particular beverage and he talks to you about it and the next thing you know, it's on your phone. That's not because they were tracking you, it's because they were tracking them. And now your phone has come in contact with theirs. Now we all know about those really irritating commercials. The ones with the silly jingles that say their name over and over again. I hate them, I'm sure you do too, but they're really effective. So let's say you're looking for a tow shop for your car and you see a list of names. You don't know any of them except for the one that you're now familiar with because you saw their stupid commercial. That's likely going to be the one that you choose because you're familiar with it and therefore trust it a little bit more, or at least you know they have the money to buy commercials. However, none of this is actually sustainable when it comes to shopping. You may feel kind of good when you buy something and then that feeling is gone. That little dopamine rush is gone. So you're going to need more. I know that I'm susceptible to this because when I'm sad, I really want to go online shopping, retail therapy. Now, when it comes to who you're most influenced by, that is going to be your peers. This is why peer pressure in shopping really does work. People aren't looking at the richest person on earth to compare themselves to. They might be jealous, but they don't really consider that attainable. Rather, people strive to have the same things that their peers have. If your coworker gets a really nice car, you may be encouraged to get one too. This is one of the reasons that peer advertising works quite so well. And yes, companies are aware of this. They hire people who work in neuroeconomics. It's an entire field. So how can we defend ourselves from manipulation? For starters, you may not be able to. A lot of the things that I'm talking about are very ingrained into our biology and our neurology. These are the same reasons that people tend to have the same morals of their peers rather than those in another country or even their parents. Your peers influence you in fashion, in the products you purchase. Guilt works quite well. It may be best when you're finding yourself wanting to purchase something to imagine what you're going to use it for and how you're going to feel when you look at your bank account after. As boring as it is, just be aware of how companies want to manipulate you. But I do have a question for you. I have a Civil War cannonball. Do you want one too? Mm -hmm.